Do you know who Spider-Man is? Do you know who Peter Parker is? <laughs> okay, let's be real here. You know, I think that honesty is key. Hashtag honesty, hashtag honesty, you know. Um, because long before I had like, you know, the football channel, and so forth. Bro, I was steeped in movies, man. I was steeped in films. I was films, films, films all the way. And after just a success of disappointment, after disappointment, after disappointment, after disappointment, I just say, look, I've, I've got to pull back because the quality that I grew up with and the quality that I was used to now, what I was being given and what I really took for granted isn't the quality that I see now. And this just was spawned from us watching that Spider-Man Far From Home, sorry, No Way Home trailer. Because I watched it. And then I watched it again, and again, and again. So apart from the just the novelty of, oh, it'd be pretty interesting to see three Spider-Men in one arena. And I'm just like, okay, that would be pretty cool to see as a novelty. But again, if we're being honest and we're being real, fully honest, full transparency here, and I look, look, look. Life is too short not to be truth, truth, truthful. That No Way Home trailer was a piece of trash. And that No Way Home trailer was garbage. What, in terms of content, what I saw was garbage. Complete and total garbage. I didn't know what was happening. The overuse of CG, bad use of CG. It's as if I'm watching a video game. There is a lack of cohesion or proper choreography with regards to what you're watching and what you're seeing. And don't tell me that, oh, it's just a trailer. I saw the Dune trailer. <laughs> and in the Dune trailer, you can perfectly see what is happening. Or the Blade Runner 2049 trailer. So, as I'm watching, I'm like, this is a mess. Like, this is a complete and utter mess. And it goes down to the issue that I have with comic book movies and with the MCU, because I'll, I'll talk about Spider-Man separately, but let's just talk about, rather than the character of Spider-Man, just the way that Spider-Man has been executed. So let's just go all the way back, way, way, way back. So we're gonna go, go back. You go back to, to the first Superman film. Richard Donner isn't, was not going to completely adapt the comic book. Let's go through it. Richard Donner was like, screw the comic book. <laughs> screw the comic book. I'm adapting a film. Now, when I say screw the comic book, I don't mean that literally, but figuratively speaking, because he's like, we're gonna take the spirit of the comic book, but this medium is film. And film is a totally different medium from the comic book. So as he took it, he's like, okay, we now have to translate, to, translate this to film. Superman is a garbage character from the comic book. Superman in the comic books is a crap character. He's zero dimensional. So Chris Reeve was, I'm a Julia trained actor. I can't just take what is here on the comic book because what's on the comic book is complete garbage. I have to now add some life and some depth to it and that's why he gave an incredible performance because what he did from the crap source material that he was given is absolutely, it was freaking genius. Absolutely genius. So what he saw in Superman was that was a film based off of a comic book. It wasn't just, let's just make a comic book film. No, it is a film first but this is a film that takes inspiration from a comic book. You look at Batman from Tim Burton. Tim Burton was, I don't know, could have put a dude dressed as a bat with gray pajamas and a bright blue cape on film. That's stupid. He's going to be dressed in black. And I'm going to try to explain the absurdity of a guy dressing up as a bat and create a world that would make a guy who dresses up as a bat actually make sense. Again, he's making a film heightened with heightened reality, but still a film based off of a comic book. So when you look at Superman 1 and Batman 1, which are like the, the top, it's like there is something real you can hold on to. There is something you can connect to. And then you look at um, something like Blade. For Blade, again, it's like there's a real, there's so, the, at the foundation, it's, it's, it's real. Obviously, it's what I was saying, it got crazy, but at the foundation, it's, 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 it's real. And you look at Captain America, the, the first Avenger, 
at its core, there is something real. There's a real story. There's a real character there. But I go back to Superman 1. What was the real appeal of Superman? We're going to make you believe that a man can fly. So how do we take people to these movies and believe that a man can fly? And that was a beauty. It's the same thing with Jurassic. I envy the people back in 93 who went into the cinema to watch Jurassic Park and saw dinosaurs. Because I remember when I saw the trailers for Jurassic Park and I was, bro, I was, I was, I was terrified. Because I was like, because in my mind, I thought, that, how the hell did they get real dinosaurs? Because I thought, bro, I was like, I was, I was super young. Okay, basically, I was like, I was super young. So when I saw the trailer for Jurassic Park, I was like, how the hell do they get real dinosaurs to be in a film? Because I thought they got real dinosaurs because it looked so real, you know? And that is where we now come to the issue here because when you watch Superman 1, it was real. They were like, we've got to make it seem like this guy is really flying. So when you watch Superman 1 now, it doesn't age because it has, it, because it has connection to realism within them. So if you're making a Spider-Man film, and if, let's say, you're giving a Spider-Man to some, you have to be like, we have to bring back the magic to films. We have to find a way to make a guy really swing. That, so that is now the difficulty. Just as with Richard Jones, like, man, how, and this was in the late 70s, how do we make a guy fly in the late 70s without the amazing CGI and comedy effects that you now have right now? So, for... If you're making a Spider-Man film, you're going to be like, man, how can we make a guy... Because if you can make a guy really swing, the sensation you'll be given as an audience member will be totally different from seeing a video game. Because when you look at the Tobey Maguire films, you look at the Andrew Garfield films, you look at these Tom Holland films, bro, it's, it's a video game. Because as soon as you swing, you're like, oh, boom. Because see, obviously, I don't know how you, how you do it, but that is the whole difficulty. Because if a man says to myself, oh, look, a way you could do it is you're in a set and the entire set is, is green screen and then you build certain rigs and then you get like a stunt man to, to a swing and you know what? They did a section of it in Amazing Spider-Man 1 because if you look at Amazing Spider-Man 1 they were actually behind the scenes where you actually see someone really swinging um, through the streets and so forth because they actually built a, a rig there so because the reason why you can do it in green screen is if Spider-Man is swinging, what's your focus on? It's not on the, on the buildings. You can make the buildings CCG. Your, your focus is on Spider-Man. So obviously there are some scenes we can make in CG, but if you're doing a, a close-up or like a medium on Spider-Man with the background in, in the background or, or blood, bro, you can do that where you have a stunt guy in a, in a full set built in green screen. So, but see, that's because people are lazy. And people want to dumb down the audience. So they're like, hey, this is the PlayStation age. Let's just do, let's get a bunch of animators. Because when you when you watch, when I'm watching that stuff, I'm like, there's nothing magical there. There's nothing that says, man, how the hell did they do that? When you're watching Dune, bro, there are points in Dune where I'm like, wait a minute, is this CG or is this real? And when I'm looking at it, because even when you look at the sound rooms, I'm like, I know these sound rooms are CG, but the way he's filmed it, the way he's made it look, it looks so real. And when you look at some of the sets and so forth, there are times where I was like, wait a minute, did he build the set or is that CG? Is that CG or is that? Because it's so immersive because he's worked so hard to say, I know I'm using effects, but I'm gonna make it seem like if the effects are so real. In this, there is literally zero effort with regards to trying to make the effects look real or trying to give you a real immersive experience. As I'm watching it, I'm like, <laughs> bro, I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, like, for me, it's, it's trash. It's trash because if I want to, if I want to watch a video game, I'll just play a video game. I'll just play the Spider-Man game on freaking PS4 or PS5, you know, because there are video games right now that have better effects than what I just saw in um, Far From Home. Also, sorry, No Way Home. <laughs> so as I'm watching that, I can't connect to it. There's nothing that I can connect to. There's, there's nothing that really brings me in. There's nothing that I can like me man. That, that this is grounded in some reality. It's pro like. We just see Spider-Man with the lizard guy, um, Green Goblin, Doc Ock, you're like, this is, it's like a video game. You're watching a freaking video game, man. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, because, you know, because, because, see, because I got tired of just complaining and complaining and complaining. I was like, rather than just complain, 
just say, you know what, this is not for me, let me just move on. But I just wanted just to do this video just to put all my honest thoughts out there. So that's just one thing then. Overuse of CG. CG will always get dated. One thing that never gets dated are real effects and real stunts and something that's grounded in reality because reality can never date. You, you, you will always go back and watch. You can watch Jurassic Park right now and still go, wow. Jurassic Park is still more impressive than Jurassic World because Jurassic World is, bro, those effects now look dated now. But for Jurassic Park, you, could, you will always be like, man, how the hell did they do that? Because it's real. It's real. So Jurassic Park will always have that magic that a Jurassic World can never have. Spider-Man, though, the character. And my issues with the MC. Do you know who Spider-Man is? Do you know who Peter Parker is? See, I put out a poll because I said that I believe Spider-Man is the most popular character in the world. Now people say no, it's Superman. But you can have a strong debate as to whether it's Spider-Man or Superman. I think it's Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man is the most popular because I believe that Spider-Man will always appeal to um, young kids, more so than Superman. See, the thing with Superman is that for the older guys, boom. Even a five-year-old right now, if a five-year-old right now sees Superman, Spider-Man, Batman, a five-year-old will grab the Spider-Man toy because he just looks cool. And the Spider-Man, because he's Peter Parker, because he's younger, will always appeal to the younger youth than the older person. So, so the more young kids that come into the world, they will always gravitate towards Spider-Man. So that's my argument. Spider-Man is a big dog. And the issue with the MCU is, it was cool to begin with. It was a great idea. Wow, let's just mix in guys together and let's just combine worlds and characters going to other guys' films. It's a great idea that they took from the comics. Wow. Right now, the idea is now harming the characters. And the idea now is now removing the agency of the characters. So much so. This is the third Spider-Man film that we've, that we've had. In the first Spider-Man film, Iron Man gave him his costume and this guy was literally Iron Man's BH. Literally, the guy was depending on Iron Man. This is Peter Parker who builds his own web slingers. This is Peter Parker who is a triple A grade A science student who is a, a near genius and who is obsessed with science. But he's using Iron Man tech. And in the second film, he's using Iron Man. Because there was one scene in Spider Man, no him that's like, okay, <laughs> all right, where He's like doing all this kind of stuff, building his um, outfits and Happy's looking at him and he's looking at him in the sense of, ah, he's now taking the role of, of Tony Stark. So I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Bro, this is Peter Parker, this is Spider-Man. I guess Iron Man has been great in the MCU movies and so forth. But bro, this is freaking Spider-Man. This, this is the biggest dog of, this is the big dog. This is Marvel's big, Marvel's flagship hero is Spider-Man. That's the flagship hero. Now, you may have done great to prop up Captain America and Iron Man, but Marvel has been built off of Spider-Man, has been built off of his popularity and so forth. And the way this guy has been shot changed and in Spider-Man has been abused and insulted by the MCU. He's been completely disrespected by the MCU. And maybe it's a case because MCU like, well, maybe because it's Sony and so forth, I don't know. But when I look at Far From Home and he's fighting like about four or five villains. So he's fighting about four or five villains. Now here's the thing. I don't know whether Toby or Garfield are going to be in it. Let's just say they're not in it. How is the dude you've given me in these two films who struggled against Vulture, struggled against a clownish Mysterio, going to handle four or five villains? Which is why surely it makes sense that he, uh, that he has help. And even beyond that, there's even a point in the trailer where, like, I think he's got a suit that has been made by Doctor Strange or something that has been held from by Doctor Strange. Because, like, if he's been given suits by Iron Man in the first two films and not been given those suits by Doctor Strange, I'm like, bro, this is guys, this, this dude is trash. And that's the issue with the MCU because for the MCU, they don't really care about the agency and the developments of the character. All they're all about is this is a great business thing that we have. Because what we're doing is, you have to watch this to watch this. You have to watch this to watch it. Because I was watching Spider-Man, because I've not seen Homecoming for ages. I just like Far From Home. I watched Far From Home again, I was like, um, now, 
I didn't like, I, 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 I didn't like it. But then I was like, come here, Homecoming, let me watch it again. First half of Homecoming was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. This is right now. I like this. This is good. But by the time you now get to the second half of this film, then it's like, um, so by the time you get to, get to the second half of this film, then it's like, wait a minute. This is just another Marvel episode. <laughs> like, this is heavily influenced by Iron Man. And it's one of those things of like, if you haven't seen the previous Marvel, Marvel, Marvel movies, you may get lost in the Spider-Man Homecoming film. So, the issue is Spider-Man has no freaking agency in these movies. Because let's be real with you, because we, we, we don't know what's going to happen at the end of this film, but I can almost promise you that by the end of this, this film, you're going to say to yourself that, have we really, has this guy really had a tri trilogy? Has this guy really been Spider-Man? I'm not a fan of Tobey Maguire's films, and the Amazing Spider-Man films were, were crap. Through no fault of Andrew Garfield. But at least in the Tobey Maguire films, he was Spider-Man. At least he was, at least everything revolved around him. Even in Andrew Garfield's film, as many issues as, as they had, at least all those films revolved around him. But, let's keep it this, I mean, bro, the, the guy was wearing like an iron, like, what the hell is that suit? Like, like what is that suit? <laughs> that suit looks like a combination of Iron Man tech, Stark tech, Doctor Strange tech. I'm like, it's, it's, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. So for, that's it, just for me. <sighs> like, look, man, because as I said again, I was a fan of Captain America 1, 2, 3, and maybe some others, but really. I was only really in it for Captain America. That was my guy. For me, those films I think are amazing. And the first Avenger is top five comic book movie of all time for, for, for me. I've never been a fan of the MCU. I appreciate what the MCU have done and I appreciate how they've brought in guys. But in terms of standalone films and quality of films and trying to focus on the films, because the whole point of the MCU and what Kevin Feige is doing is this is like, this is like an episodic thing that is just ongoing. And I'm like, cool, but if I want to watch a TV show season, I know where to go. If I'm going to a cinema, I want to watch a film that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, that's what I want. So, um, you see, this is just me. Maybe for some people, hey man, it's great and they love it, and that's all well I'm going to do. But just for, for me, because see, of course I like comic books, but I'm a bigger film fan than a comic book, book fan. Because I know that, I know comic books and some certain comic book stories always should remain in the comic books. But film is real. And film is something that is steeped in reality and should be grounded in some certain piece of reality, which is what's made the Captain America film so good because Steve Rogers was made to be such a real character. Which is why Iron Man was so good because Danny Jr. really made Iron Man a real character and so forth. Um, and look, and if, I see. And guys now trying to like insult Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott is right. He is right. Most of these comic book films, man, they're not very good. They're, they're not very good films. They may be good in what they're trying to do, but in terms of films, they're not very good films. And guys now calling us Ridley Scott, do you realize that he's made probably the best film of the year? The last deal is better than pretty much any MC film. As a film, just as in terms of a film of directing, storytelling, acting, the last deal is probably better than every MCU film. Because I'm sorry, I love Captain America First Avenger. The last deal is a better film than First Avenger. And wins a soldier. <laughs> so anybody who watches that film, because people say, oh man, that film is so boring and so forth. Like, okay, then you're just hating. Because if you appreciate the artistry and the technicalities of film, The Last Duel is a bloody good film. Obviously, it's not perfect. I have some issues with the film. But The Last Duel is better than pretty much every MCU film that there is, you know? And I was having an argument on Twitter. I just want to you know that guys are mad. Because, because there was a guy that said that Infinity War is better than all the Matrix films. Now, Revolutions is... <laughs> Reloaded? Okay, I love Reloaded, but boom. The, the Matrix 1 is a sci-fi classic. <laughs> and that's it. Infinity War is not a film. Infinity War is an episode. That's the issue. Infinity War is an episode. You you can show Matrix to anybody and be like, oh, I can love it because Matrix is beginning, middle, end. Infinity War is an episode. 
you can't watch Infinity War without watching the previous films. Because Infinity War starts with you assuming you've watched the, the previous films. And then the Infinity War has a cliffhanger ending. So Infinity War doesn't have a defined ending, it's a cliffhanger. And the Infinity War doesn't have a beginning. Because it isn't the beginning, it's like, oh, dropping you in because we assume that you've watched the, the previous films. So, which is why, I swear, I've, I don't like Infinity I've already watched Infinity War once, I don't like the film. It is some great CG and so forth. For me, Infinity War, that's not a film. <laughs> That is not a film. So you can't even compare that to something like The Last Duel or The Matrix, which those are films. So yeah, man, look, man, that's just my thoughts. Then look, I'm gonna watch Far From Home because I'm a Spider-Man fan. And I'm curious, just, I'm, see, I'm curious. I am curious. I know I wouldn't like the film. That's, that's just a fact. But I'm just watching it because, hey, I'm just curious just to see, okay, you know, what really is gonna go down in this? And let's, and let's just see what goes down, man. So yeah, man, those are my, my two thoughts, man. More love.